A great day, dear friends. This is Robert Shepard with Godly TV, King James Institute, and we're going to finish up our series on the life, death, a burial, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. We're going to be studying out of the book of Matthew, in chapter 28 particularly. We're going to talk about the ministry of angels in, a, in the affair, the marvelous joy of his return, and the message he returned with. And this is under the magnificent resurrection. And the ministry of angels in the affair is interesting. If you look in Matthew 28, verses 2 through 7, you'll see, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to draw toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his remnant was white as snow. And for fear of him the keepers did shake, and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And so we see uh, an angel of heaven has descended. And there is a witness to Jesus' resurrection. And uh, there was a great earthquake when he descended. And he rolled the stone back, which was a great stone. Uh, there he sat on it, and his countenance was like lightning. Marvelous. And his remnant was white as snow. And the keepers there of the tomb were fearful became like dead men. And now let's talk about the marvelous joy of his return. Uh, Matthew 28, 8 through 10 talks about this marvelous joy. It says, And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did return to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. And so Jesus has returned. And he's telling them not to be afraid and to tell the brethren to go into Galilee. And there they're going to see him. And now we're going to talk about the, the message he returned with. Matthew 28, 8 through 10 is, is a great message a message that Jesus returned with. Verse 16 through 20, rather, uh, says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. And so we see Jesus has returned and he has a command. Uh, he says, Go therefore and teach all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost and teach them to observe the things that Christ taught us to observe. And he said he's going to be with us until the end of the world. Amen. Now we're going to talk about the resurrection of Christ in the miracle resurrection of the saints departed. 
And this is an interesting passage. It talks about uh, uh, other saints being risen when, when Christ was risen. There were great miracles going on. And so Jesus didn't rise alone. And friends, when he returns, uh, he won't return alone. And when he leaves, he won't leave alone. The miracle resurrection of the saints departed, Matthew 27, 52 through 54 says, And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. And now when the centurion, and they that were with him, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake, and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. And so his resurrection brought with it uh, great and powerful miracles. Third, we're going to talk about the resurrection of Christ in the multitude of the witnesses. There were a multitude of witnesses that saw the risen Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-2 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the, great, the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James and of the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it be where I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Paul is, is talking about the the magnificent resurrection and he is he is explaining and, and telling us about all the people that witnessed the risen Christ and at the end he gives himself as as a witness and testimony to the fact that Jesus was risen and now there were many people in the time when Paul had written this and, and the church was established uh, that that had seen the risen Lord. And they were well aware of these witnesses. Now we're going to talk about the ascension of Christ. What did he do? Well, he, he departed with a blessing and encouragement. And Luke 24, 50 talks about his departure. 50 says, And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted his hands, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them, and carried up into heaven. Amen. 52 says, And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. I want to point out to you that he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Jesus departed with a blessing. He delivered encouragement and comfort 
to his disciples. John 14, 1-4 talks about this encouragement and comfort. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Now let's talk about where did he go, the ascension. Where did Jesus go? He ascended unto heaven. Ephesians 4, 9 through 12 talk about his ascension into heaven. In verse 9 it says, Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the word of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And so we see Jesus ascended far up above the heavens that we know. And he gave, he gave gifts, he gave wonders, uh, powers to those for the edifying of the body of Christ, the perfecting of the saints. Now let's talk about the ascension. Uh, why did he go? And he went to receive, represent, and to ready. First he went to receive. He went to receive rewards for his labors and sufferings. Philippians 2, 5-7 through seven says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Of all things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And so we see here that God has highly exalted him and given him great reward. He's given him a name which is above every name. I want you to notice here that, that the atheist is mentioned. Uh, the atheist, atheism is only a temporary condition. At some point in time, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of of God the Father. Now I want you to notice that um, Jesus went to represent his people in the presence of God. He went to receive rewards and he went to represent his people in the presence of God. Hebrews 4, uh, 14 through 16 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed unto the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are. Yet without sin, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And finally, Jesus went to ready us a place. He went to receive his reward, to represent his people, and to ready 
a place for his, his holy saints. We see here that, uh, that Jesus says again that in his house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive unto you myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And so, Jesus, in John 14, 1 through 4, tells us that he is ascended into heaven to ready us a place. And again, that was verses 2 through 3. And it says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am. There ye may be also. I'm thankful for God's marvelous mercy today. The mercy that allowed me to see His glorious grace. Jesus is worthy of great reward. He represents us in the presence of God the Father. He is there making ready a place for His holy saints. Won't you join us? Won't you become one of the holy brethren, a saint of God? Jesus wants to save you. He, it's the desire of his heart that everyone would be saved. But he can't force salvation. He won't force salvation on you. It's a gift that you have to receive freely. You have to take it. It's there for you, but you can't receive the gift of grace if you aren't willing to admit that you're a sinner. And confess those sins and believe that, that you're going to turn away from those sins and, and not visit them again. Work to accomplish a better life, to, to work uh, uh, on the road to salvation. There are, there are pitfalls, but we can continue to work on our salvation. And now I'm not saying that we're going to be without sin when we start down that road, but we can work to a place where we are not sinless, but we sin less. We have to be willing to publicly proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. There's something about the public proclamation that seals it, friends. If we aren't willing to present Jesus publicly, then He's not going to present us to God the Father. And so I encourage you uh, to admit you're a sinner, repent of your sins, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and He died to save us of our sins, and Confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and live your life for God forevermore. And once you do that, publicly proclaim uh, Jesus as Lord. And you're ready for baptism. You're ready for membership in the church. And I encourage you to, to find a good Bible-based church, a church uh, that preaches the old book and adheres to the old ways uh, God loves a, a pure and perfect word, and he loves the old ways. You see, just like biblical times, there are more people today that are corrupting and perverting the word of God than are keeping the true and pure preserved word of God. They honor themselves. They read from an easy reader because it's easy for them. The old book commands us to study, but these new easy readers allow them to simply do their best. And friends, our best isn't good enough. What's good enough is the Word of God. The Word of God is true, perfect, and pure, and God has preserved His Word. And I want to encourage you 
to get in that book and study it. Learn what God has uh, for you. Learn where God uh, has you right now and where he wants you to be. Study God's word and show yourself approved. But friends, be careful what you teach. Uh, we don't want to teach with, without authority, without uh, concern, uh, without decency and order. Uh, we don't want to teach apostasy. We have to be very careful what we teach in the Word of God. God is, is, is wonderful. He's, he's provided a, a Word for us and and so I encourage you to teach out of the Word. Provide a scripture. There's power there. But be careful where you expound the scripture. Thank you again for tuning in. Uh, like us. Uh, uh, share our, our videos and subscribe to our page. And I appreciate you and thank you again.